here needs a 48 volt input and the other support 36 to 60 volt input. So which one do you think works better with a solar power system? Hey tech lovers, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Today we're diving into a powerful surveillance solution for a remote industrial sites that's 800 meters away from the nearest power grid. So we're setting a 24-7 security camera system, but no electricity, no problem. We'll break down how everything works, so let's get started. To keep your cameras running 24-7, you need a reliable power source. Long-range power over Ethernet might work, but for long-distance setup, there are voltage drop and power loss issues. So in remote areas like this one here, solar power is often the best solution. So a solar power system is made up of three main components. First, solar panels. Now, this captures sunlight and convert it into DC electricity. Think of it as the fuel source. And next we have the charge controller. This is the brain. It regulates the voltage and currents from the solar panel to the battery, preventing overcharging or deep discharge. And last we have the battery. This stores energy generated during the day, so your system keep running at nights or on cloudy days. And when sized correctly, these three components work together to give you uninterrupted power, even off-grid. So now let's talk about how we actually power the cameras. So we're using two IP cameras out there, one PDZ camera and one bullet camera. So we need a way to connect them and supply both power and data. And that's where power over Ethernet comes in. It lets us send data and power through one single Ethernet cable, making things simpler and cleaner. So we're using a power over Ethernet switch. But here's the catch, because not all switches are built the same. So now let's take a look at these two power over Ethernet switches. So on the outside, they look exactly the same, but one here needs a 48 volt input and the other support 36 to 60 volt input. So which one do you think works better with a solar power system? Now, if you pick the 36 to 60 volt one, you're absolutely right. Why? Because solar power system often operates in a variable voltage ranges. So a switch that accepts a wider input range, 36 to 60 volt, is far more flexible and stable, especially when battery voltage fluctuates between charging and discharging. So next, let me show you how to connect everything together. So first we need to connect our solar panels to our charge controller. So we have positive and negative and it's pretty easy to distinguish them. So this to here, you can hear the click sound and connect the other cable. So now the solar panels are connected to the charge controller. Next we need to connect our batteries to the charge controller as well. So also we have positive and negative, it's pretty easy. And last, the power output, we are going to connect it to our PoE switch here. Now this is an 8-port L2 Plus Manage Outdoor PoE switch with 36 to 60 volt solar input. Now this switch is designed specifically for outdoor solar power application. It supports 8 power over Ethernet ports except a wide 36 to 60 volt input. Also, IP rated waterproof housing. This is L2 Manage, meaning you can get VLAN, QoS, and monitoring features. It's tough, reliable, and made for exactly this kind of deployment. So without saying, I'm going to connect our short patch cord to get the power to the PDZ camera and our bullet camera. So okay, we've got the power. Now, how do we send the camera's footage back to our control room 
800 meters away. So we decided to use fiber optic cable. You can see the fiber optic cable is linked from here back to our control room. We're going to talk about advantage of fiber optic cable later. And now let's connect the cable to our switch here. Now, in order to connect the fiber optic cable, we will need this. This is an SFP transceiver. This module converts the optical signal back to electrical so the switch can process them. Now let's plug it into the SFP slot. This switch has two SFP slots. And we're using this two-string pre-made fiber optic cable. Let's use string A plug it into the SFB transceiver and boom, our data is transforming from the fiber optic cable to the control room. And here's why we use fiber optic cable. First, long distance cable, unlike Ethernet cables, which maxes out at 100 meters. And second, email to EMI, electromagnetic interference. And that's critical in industrial zones. And third, high bandwidth perfect for high-res camera streams. So we're running the two-string fiber optic cable from the remote power over Ethernet switch back to our control room. So now we are going to use the two-string fiber optic cable to connect to our 8 plus 8 switch. Now this switch has 8 SFP ports and 8 Ethernet ports. And remember, we used string A and not to forget our SFP transceiver just slide it in to one of the SFP port and connect the string A fiber optic cable. And next, we're going to use a short patch cord to connect our switch here to the network video recorder so we can display video footage. So let's give it a second. There it is. Now our live video feed is streaming from our remote cameras, fully connected. You can see I'm waving my hand and solar powered. So now let's quickly talk about planning your solar power system. So there's a lot to consider. Footage, power draw, location, and how many days of backup time you need. But now, tools like ChatGPT can help with that. Let me show you. So I'm a slow typer. I already typed in everything. Now let's ask ChatGPT to help us. I asked ChatGPT to create a solar power security system. We need to size the solar panel, the charge controller, and the battery. Remember the four pieces of information that we talked about? The switch is 36 volt, that's the voltage. And we have four IP cameras, each need 10, so total power draw is 40 watts in total. And the backup time is about four to five days. Now the location, let's say Phoenix, Arizona. So now we just have to wait for the chat GPT to calculate everything. So now let's see what comes up. Now, it already sized everything. It defined the load. And also the battery bank for four to five days. The solar rate recommend the solar panel that we need and also the angle. The charge controller and everything. So see, ChatGPT is fast, smart and super helpful. And now before we close, here's another long distance solution. Composite fiber optic cable. Now it combines fiber optic cables for data and copper for power in a single jacket. Now this lets you send both power and data over the same cable. Perfect if you don't want to build a solar power system. Well, it's not for every case, but it's a powerful solution depending on your site. So there you have it, a full off-grid surveillance setup, powered by the sun, connected by fiber, 
and built for the real world. Now, if you get any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. We've got more smart tech videos coming your way. Thank you very much for watching and stay secure.